Hi, my beautiful YouTube friends. Misty here with Queen Bee's Vintage. Welcome to or welcome back to our channel. I have to say a huge welcome to all of our new subscribers that we have gained since Friday afternoon when our wonderful friend Liz at Traditions by the Seasons gave us a shout out. Thank you guys so much for coming over and checking us out. We have been so overwhelmed by all of the wonderful comments that you guys have left for us. And I think I'm caught up with the exception of the ones that have come in this afternoon. I literally have spent almost 20, well over 24 hours responding to comments. So thank you, thank you, thank you guys so much. It means the world to us. And um, we are gonna try to stay up on comments as we grow. It is, uh, we are very busy. Um, my husband has his business, which I run for him. My mom and I have our business that I run, and she as well. I have two very, very busy kids that I'm running everywhere, and um, we're trying to get prepared for some big shows. So a lot of our upcoming videos are gonna be projects that we're creating for those shows. We are still gonna have plenty of home decor, Easter tours, home tours, things like that. But we hope you'll enjoy some of the things that we're going to be creating. And um, so that brings us to today. Today is gonna be a DIY day. And some of you may know, because you watched the haul video, I was so excited. It was a Hobby Lobby haul. And I bought this beautiful uh, cake stand in there that had wood beads around the base and it was distressed with some white and you could see some of the the darker wood showing through underneath and it was just beautiful well i went to pick it up off the table by the just the the plate part of it itself and the wood literally snapped off so i had to return it and of course they haven't had them back again since so i've decided i'm going to create my own so the day I returned the cake stand to Hobby Lobby, I purchased some of these wooden rounds. They came in a package of three, and I went ahead and took them out of the package, but this is the label that's on them. They're over in the nude wood aisle. They were $3.99, and of course, I used a 40% off coupon on them. So what I'm going to do is we're gonna be attaching all three of these wooden discs together. And then, I'm super excited, I found this a while back. It's a wooden candle holder. I picked this up at a thrift shop. I don't know if you guys can see it, but for $2. And it is Pottery Barn. So this is going to be the base for my cake stand. And then what I'm going to be using are some of these half round beads. So they're rounded on one side and flat on the other. And um, I'm going to be using some of these small beads. And I'm going to link all of this in the description box below. But these are just some small round wooden beads and they do not have a hole in them. So what I have already done, well, let me show you the, let me finish showing you the supplies first. Sorry, guys. So sorry for the goo running out of this, but I've already been using it. I absolutely love this glue. It's called Fabri-Tac, and it is really meant for using on fabric, but it says right here on the bottle, bonds, fabric, lace, glass, leather, wood, and trims. So. I really use this on everything. I love it. And um, everything I've used it on, very durable. I've never had anything fall apart when I've used it. I use this a lot in my paper crafting as well. So you haven't seen the last of this glue. I refer to it all the time. And you can pick this up at like uh, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Joann's. Always use a coupon because it's kind of pricey. This size, this is a eight ounce bottle, usually runs 
anywhere from like $13.99 to $15.99 a bottle, but believe me, it's worth it. Even if you have to pay full price, it's worth it. But if you can use a coupon, definitely do that. I will check and see if this is available on Amazon as well, but I'll put a link in the description box below. And then I'm just going to use this um, Art Mines white chalk paint. You guys saw me use this in my farmhouse beaded garland tutorial. And we're also going to be using some of this Art Mines DIY paint. And um, this is called Incognito. So it's kind of a blacky gray color. Actually, scratch that. We are not using the Indigo or Incognito. That's for the next project I'm gonna do. I'm going to be using these two paints by Folk Art. Um, the first one is Teddy Bear Tan, and the second one is Linen. So what I want to do is, you know, I have my eye on a three-tiered tray at Hobby Lobby right now, and it's got um, like a beaded trim around the edge of, edges of the tray, and it is kind of like this color with a whitewash on it. So that's why we're gonna be using the tans instead of the incognito paint. That's for another DIY I'm gonna do for you guys. So um, we're gonna be painting with that. I've got the half round beads, which I've already showed you, and the round ones, and we're set. So let me show you what I've already started on. Okay, so what I did is I took two of the rounds and I put my Fabri-Tac down and then I clamped them together. Now we're gonna add the last round to this, glue it. We'll clamp it and let it sit for a little while so that it um, has a chance to start to set up and dry. And then we'll continue on with our construction process. Okay, so I have removed my clamps and this is already set up nicely. And we're gonna go ahead and add our Fabri-Tac to the, the other round that we need to secure. And I'm gonna move the camera down so that you guys can um, get a better look at what I'm doing down here. Give me just a second. Alrighty, so the two I've already glued together, I've got those here on my mat. And we're just gonna get a nice amount, let me see, I gotta move this back a little so you guys can see, of glue on this. And you don't wanna put too much because you don't want it like squeezing out the sides when we clamp it, but you're gonna wanna put enough that it has a nice secure hold. So I put a good amount on it and then just right around the very edge I'm just going to lightly smear what's left of that bubble right around the edge like I said we don't want a bunch of it oozing out when we clamp it but we want those want it really nice and secure around the edge okay and then we're gonna take our, our other piece and lay it on here. And then I just kind of stand it up and kind of move it around just to make sure that I've got it lined up right on the edges here. And then once you do that, we're gonna come back with these clamps and we're gonna clamp it together. Just feeling all the way around the edge to make sure it's nice and nice and even. Okay, so now that we have that clamped, I'm gonna set that aside and let it dry for just a bit. And then I'm gonna take my wooden candlestick. So I know you guys aren't all gonna be able to run out and buy a Pottery Barn candlestick at the thrift store, 
but Michael's back in their nude wood section, they have uh, some great wood candlesticks and they have one that's kind of similar to this actually. And I almost picked it up and then I thought, oh no, I've got the Pottery Barn one at home. So um, I wanna say they're about $5.99. So of course you could use a coupon and um, pick one up for this project. I will also see if I can um, find something that would uh, work just as well from Amazon and link that in the description box below. So what I'm gonna do, because I'm not using like an all-purpose paint or a chalk paint for my base, is I'm gonna sand this lightly with some 150 grit sandpaper. And you're just, want to give it a little tooth. This kind of has a little bit of a sheen to it. So we want to get rid of the sheen and give it just a little bit of tooth. So we're just going to, you know, you'll just lightly go around and, and sand it. And I know for some people this is a horrible sound. So I'm not going to do all of this on camera, but I'm going to go ahead and, and lightly sand the whole thing. And then I'll come right back with you guys. All right, guys, I went outside and sanded this down and then cleaned off all the sanding dust. And what we're going to do for our next step is take the, the smaller beads, the ones that have no holes, and see here around this edge? We're going to be attaching these all the way around. And again, we'll be using the Fabri-Tac. And I think the best way to do this is to put some of the glue up along, let me show you, up along the underside of this edge. And I'm just gonna go in little sections at a time. And then we'll put some along the bottom as well. So I'm just gonna go along the, the bottom in there kind of snug with the glue. And I'm gonna start sticking my beads down. Add a little bit more glue here. So I'm just gonna continue this same process all the way around until I have the beads secured. But see, it's gonna look like this. So let me finish this up and I'll be right back. All right, I've got all of the beads glued on the base of the candlestick. And now what we're gonna do is go ahead and glue the uh, top onto the candlestick. So I'm just gonna take my Fabri-Tac. And because this tapers down, I want my glue right up along this flat edge, closest to where you would put the candle in. So I still want this to dry some more with the clamps on it. 
So I'm gonna actually just leave the clamps on, which will be great because it'll be added weight, and then I'm gonna put something heavy on this while it dries. But I want to kind of line this up so that my candlestick is centered on here. And I'm just eyeing it up. I think that looks about right. I'm gonna tip it over. And I'm gonna get um, a heavy, I have a brick I think I'm gonna put on top of this. And um, I'm gonna let it dry really good and then we'll come back and paint it. All right, guys, I think our glue is dry enough. We're gonna remove the clamps and we are gonna start painting this. I think it's looking pretty cool so far. Okay, so this is how it's looking so far. And what we're gonna do, I played around a little bit while it was drying on mixing the, the two tan paints. And I've decided to just stick with using just the teddy bear. It matches this uh, pretty close. And I'm really not going to paint the candlestick part, we're gonna get some paint on the beads and we're gonna do the top. And then I love to just use these little paper plates from the dollar store to put my paint on. And I'm just gonna put some, pour some out onto the plate. Ew, this is kind of globby. I haven't used this in a while. We'll thin it out and make it work. All right, and I'm just going to use this flat paintbrush. And I'm gonna just start going around and putting a little paint on the beads. It's okay if a little bit gets onto my candlestick. So for those of you that wanna do this project and you're gonna purchase one of the candlesticks at Michael's or something online, if it's the raw wood, you'd wanna go ahead and put the Teddy Bear folk art paint all over the candlestick, the beads, and the top, paint the entire thing out. But since this is close enough, I'm just gonna get the paint on the raw wood and go from there. Just wanna make sure you kinda get in between the beads, get all the raw wood covered. So see how that's looking so far? Pretty close match. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue painting the beads and then I'll come back and we'll do the top. All right, so let me show you. I've got the beads painted. And what I wanna do is we're gonna paint the underside of our round. All right, so I have the underside all painted and I went ahead and um, did 
around the edge as well. So now we just need to do the top. And when you're painting and there's a edge like this, you wanna make sure you're always going back over and making sure you're not leaving a big paint ridge. I kinda of like to go around the edge first, that way I can concentrate on that. I'm kind of going up around under the bottom too, just to make sure I'm not getting any kind of ledge under there since I am using this wider paintbrush. And our bottom coat, we want good coverage. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect because we are going over this with another color and we're going to be distressing it. The raw wood really sucks up the paint though when there's no primer or anything else over the top of it. So you just wanna make sure to get a Nice, good coverage. I'm just lightly going back over and feathering the paint with my brush so there aren't a bunch of crazy brush strokes. And there's our top. So we'll just set this aside and let it dry, and then we'll be ready for the second part of the painting process. Alrighty guys, we are going to start with our second coat, which is gonna be our white chalk paint. I'm just gonna pour a little bit out onto this paper plate. And we really don't use a whole lot of paint in this technique. So you don't need to pour too much out. And our DIY almost went sideways, guys, because I keep forgetting that most of my stuff is at my mom's. So I need to make sure I pull everything out before I start and make sure I have what I need before I start a DIY. So typically I, this is called a chip brush. They're the inexpensive paint brushes at Home Depot or Lowe's. And you might even be able to get these at Walmart in their paint section. But the smaller ones, which are like I typically use the brush half this size, but we're just gonna use this and make do. It'll teach you guys how to utilize things you have at home. <laughs> but, um, so it's about half the size of this is what I would normally use to do this. And um, what we're going to do is I'm just, just going to lightly, very, very lightly kiss the tips of the paintbrush onto the paint. And then pounce it off. And then I'm also gonna pounce it off onto a paper towel. And then we're gonna lightly start dry brushing the paint on. I'm gonna to go to the place where I pounced the paint off 
to add more. Kissing the paint back onto the brush here, pouncing it off. So we're getting this effect. Now I'm going to take it and go in the opposite direction that I started in. And then I'm gonna go back in the other direction. So you're doing kind of a cross hatch motion. I'm sorry, I'm getting right here on this very edge. And some of these harsher lines will smooth out when we sand it. And I'm not applying a lot of pressure with my brush either, guys. It's very soft. Just kind of feathering it back and forth. So I'm just gonna keep on doing this until I get my desired look. And like I said, don't worry about the heavier, harsher lines. We can smooth those out when we sand it. This would be a lot better if I had the smaller brush. Okay, I'm gonna just start going around the edge here. And just lightly putting what's left of the paint on my brush on the edge. And the edge is gonna be covered for the most part, but I still wanna make sure everything is cohesive. It all has the same look. So I'm gonna let this dry. We'll flip it over, do the base and the underside, and then we'll go on to the sanding technique. Okay, well, this DIY has definitely gone sideways, guys. So, I forgot to put these on. My son came home sick from school today, and I have been going back and forth, checking on him and taking care of what he needs. And after I got the top on, I totally spaced gluing these beads. So these are half round beads. And what I had to do is go on and glue them after the fact and then painstakingly hand paint them with the teddy bear. 
and then go back over them with the white and make it so that it looks seamless between the beads and the top here. So this still needs sanding, it isn't done, but we're going to move on now and do this and the base. So I apologize guys, I, I should have known better than to try to finish doing a DIY once I went and picked my son up from school, but I've got such a busy week and I wanna make sure I get some content out for you. So I hope you will forgive me. I have another piece set up and I'm actually gonna show you how I set up the beads and glued them on. So I've just added paint to my brush, blotted it off, blotted it on the paper towel, and here we go. Let me turn this around, and I'm just doing the same Go in one direction, go back over in the other direction. Kind of using just the edge to sweep underneath the edge of the candlestick and the round. It's never fun dry brushing when you have to dry brush around pedestals and spindles and different things like that, but it'll all work out. It doesn't look very, very good right at this moment, but I promise you it will turn out good when we're done. I will definitely be more prepared with my DIY next time to make sure that I have all my stuff. Actually, I can't even guarantee you that because I have been filming this one along with another one because I, while well, I had the mess out, I thought, well, I might as well kill two birds with one stone. Not such a great idea because the battery on the camera died while I was filming the other one and got the majority of the way through the project and realized it wasn't filming and I didn't notice the counter wasn't running because I had the camera facing downwards so you guys could see what I was doing here and yeah so it's it's been <laughs> it's been a banner day today guys so I hope you'll forgive me I hope you will still enjoy the tutorial. And after you see these two, it will definitely be better. In the other one, we're making some fun pedestal coasters that I've been seeing all over the Ray Dunn forums that I follow because you guys all know I'm addicted to Ray Dunn. And um, they're just super cute and they're great for displaying your mugs and canisters and, and you can use them for things other than Ray Dunn, guys. So I'm gonna be sharing that little project with you, but again, there's going to be some major editing and splicing the snafus since the camera wasn't running. But I've got a backup, so I'll be able to show you guys what you missed when the camera was off. <laughs> so anyway, this is gonna be kinda hard for you guys to see, but 
I've got the paint on the underside. So now I'm gonna start doing the underside of my pedestal. I mean the, uh, not the pedestal, sorry, the candlestick. And same thing on the pedestal, guys. I kind of went around it this way, and now I'm going up and down. I'll do the underside here of the candlestick, and then we'll flip it over and go over the other side of them. Same thing on the this round ball piece, going in one direction and then going back over in the other, up and down. So side to side, up and down. Okay, so now I have flipped this over and I'm gonna have to kind of hold it up so that we can do the rest of it. Oh, here comes Pesty. I swear, guys, between <laughs> my son being sick and the dogs, I may get something done here. All righty then. Sorry, guys, I can't really give you a great angle to see what I've got going on here, but I'm still just doing the same Okay. I'm just checking my little beads here. I've got a smaller brush. It's actually a stencil brush. And I'm just, I pulled it out when I had to do the top beads. And I'm just gonna use it to get into some of the little cracks and crevices between the beads. To tone down some of that teddy bear colored paint. Excuse my sniffle. Okay, so now we are going to sand this.
and I'm not gonna sit and make you guys watch. But I'm gonna take a 220 grit sandpaper and sand this, tone down some of the white and let some more of that teddy bear come through. And I'll do that and come back and show you the end result. Alrighty, I have sanded it down. And this is what I'm happy with. You guys can sand your project to whatever it is that you prefer. But I like this kind of chippy, distressed look. But this where we pieced the three wooden plaques together, I don't like that you can see that. So what I'm going to do is take this jute rickrack and glue it around the edge of that. And I'm just gonna use my Fabri-Tac. Just wiping some of the goobers off the top of it. And I gotta determine what my front is. And then I will put, I'll start this at the back. And I'm just going to run the fabric tack on the wood itself. Maybe I will. Okay, so mm, this is a bad angle too. I'm just going to take the glue start there and I'm just going to continue all the way around until I have it covered I've got the jute rick rack all the way around the edge now. And it worked out perfect when I cut it. It was perfect with the pattern so you can't even see where it comes together. So no matter where I sit, set this out, you won't see any overlap or anything like that with the jute. Well, I am super pleased with this. I hope you guys like it. I'm gonna stage it. And quickly, I'm gonna show you, if you wanna stick around, how I went about lining these up so that they looked fairly evenly spaced. Since I blew it earlier, I apologize again, guys. So let me grab the other piece that I have um, prepared. I'm gonna be painting it the same way because I think I'd like to use the two pieces together. So let me grab that really quick. All right, so I went ahead and laid my beads out all the way around. And then 
what I did with the other one is just take one bead off and I just kind of swirl the glue on there making sure I kind of get it over on the the edge of the bead and then to prevent having too much I just picked up the other bead and I rub them together like this so that there's glue all over it and then just slide them apart. And then just hold them down for a few seconds until it starts to grab. And then I just continued all the way around the piece doing the same thing. And then that way I know where each bead needs to be and the spacing between. And then just go all the way around it. I'm gonna work on this a little bit later. But once it's painted to look like the cake plate, I thought it might be kind of cute to even set them together like this. And you could put some things here and then something up on top. So I'm gonna work off on this off camera and you'll probably see them together or used in some way in my decor down the road. Sorry this has been such a hot mess, guys. Thank you so much for bearing with me. I hope you enjoy the tutorial. I hope you like how this turned out. I really, I'm really happy with it. So I figured it up guys and it cost me under $10 to make this. To be exact it was $7.70 to make and I know these are selling up to $60 depending on where you go to buy them. Uh, Hobby Lobby, the one I bought that broke was $40 retail, and of course I did get it on sale 20% off, so it was $20. Um, but I've seen some of the their other ones similar that they have out now that are running upwards of $50, so $7.70 isn't bad. And I figured it, if you wanted to make this and you were to go out and buy the candlestick that is at Michael's, it's $5.99, so if you used a 40% off coupon, it'd be $3.59, round up to $3.60. This would still only cost you $9.30 to make. What I am taking in a, into an account is I've purchased these beads, and I'll do other projects with them. A hundred come in a pack. These were like, I think a hundred in a pack for eight. 99 or 9.99 and so uh, same with the little beads that are down around here so initially you will pay a little bit more but for me it makes sense when I use these beads for various projects and divide them all out so I just thought this was something fun that I could share with you today I hope you enjoyed it and I will look forward to coming back to you guys soon with some more content. Thanks so much and have a great day.